Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast, where I, your host, Xavier Cruz, a lifelong wrestling fan, will take a lifelong friend through the action, the joys, and the drama of the world of professional wrestling. My co-host, Kelsey Silva, has been bitten by the wrestling bug, and I want to invite you to join us as I take her through the moments that made me a fan. So if you're new to wrestling and would like to get brought up to speed, or a fan who would like to relive some classic matches, promos, and segments through fresh eyes, join us as we embark on a journey through the Attitude Era and beyond. Welcome to the New to Wrestling Podcast. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the New to Wrestling Podcast. This week, we watched the August 5th, 1996 edition of Monday Night Raw, and the match card is as follows. We had Jerry the King Lawler versus Aldo Montoya, um, which was a rematch from a couple weeks ago. We had the New Rockers versus the Body Donnas, and we had a battle royal for the number one contendership for the WWF title, consisting of the British Bulldog, Owen Hart, Ahmed Johnson, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker, Mankind, The Wild Man, Mark Miro, Psycho Sid, Justin Hawk Bradshaw, Salvio Vega, and Goldust. All right. So many, th- so many people. So, so many things. <laughs> um, all right, let's get into this episode. So we start at the top with Jerry the King Lawler um, running a promo once again on Jake the Snake Roberts, bringing out Jake the Snake Roberts' tag team partner, uh, Jim Bean, um, <laughs> to <laughs> to mercilessly mock um, Aldo Montoya. Um he was talking for so long that the commentators just just decided that they were just going to do their bit over his promo. E, which was fair because honestly, I have to say it wasn't his best work. No, it, it wasn't, wasn't his, his best, best work. work. I've he usually really gets me going, but not his best work. No, no. Uh the match itself was, you know, it was pretty decent. It was very much a short one. It was uh-huh. uh it was literally two pile drivers and Aldo Montoya was Dunsky mm-hmm. dead to the world. Yeah. Um, but what really went down, like what was the big focal point of the match was what happened after, which is when Jerry, the King Lawler takes Jake, the snakes tag team partner and dumps it all up in Aldo Montoya's mouth, face, nose over and over. Just again. a ridiculous amount of whiskey everywhere. Yeah. He basically yeah. got waterboarded with Jim Bean. Right. Really, really. 100%. If he didn't leave that situation just like absolutely inebriated, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know wow. how else he was going to go through them in the evening. Mm-mm. This has all been leading up to Jake the Snake Roberts and Jerry the King Lawler eventually having a match. When this is going to take <laughs> place, I have not even an iota of an idea because it was supposed to happen at the last pay-per-view and jerry's just been talking his shit week over week so when this is actually going to come to fruition i don't know but jake the snake has every reason to just be absolutely willing to break this man's neck so yes yeah because it has just been an unstoppable barrage of insults for the better part of like two months yeah and like you just it he just brings him up at every occasion like they're not like somehow he finds a way to like bring him up like the most meaningless little detail be like that reminds me it's like Remember? when it, it's like when you have your first crush and like you can't stop <laughs> just like talking about it yeah, all yeah, the yeah, time yeah, yeah, yeah. and everyone around you is just like oh my god like we oh get my it. god <laughs> <laughs> like, yuck, but it yuck, maybe yuck, yuck. plot twist maybe they're actually in love like you know he's like oh god hate the jake's hate jake the snake so much and then he's like god i love him right it's <laughs> like, like um hell Loki a love story from- Hey Arnold. hey Arnold! Yes, that's exact. <laughs> that honestly, now like he it's takes that, that bottle of like it. Jim Bean back to his like closet shrine. Like he pulls the curtains, and, and it's, it's made of alcohol bottles and snakeskin, and that's it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see it. I really hope that's true. Oh yeah, uh, honestly, 
Wouldn't be shocked. Would be shocking. <laughs> Here we are. Um, and then, so our second match of the evening, we had the new rockers, Marty Janetti and... He's Al Snow. I don't know who what his name is currently, but he's Al Snow. Okay. You will he has one bit and he rides that bit to the end of time. Al Snow outside of his his one bit is a phenomenal like wrestling trainer. Like a lot of wrestlers have come up under Al Snow um, or oh, okay. will, you know. That's uh, cool. But for right now, he's Marty Janetti's sidekick in tight Gene Simmons. Um, and the fact that they just called themselves the new rockers really upsetting so the lack of originality marketing team we really could have done something here like even just i said to xavier's like even the rollers like the rockers and the rollers like i don't know we really there could have been there was no brainstorming at that none none they were just like you're just gonna wear the same outfits and call yourself the new rockers and really that's sad. It. Really upsetting. Right. Um, and but they were facing the body donnas, and it was a pretty, pretty decent match. Like they're both very athletic like teams, so it was a back and forth kind of situation. The body donnas also make me cringe because it's a lack of originality on like a different front where it's not like they gave them like just a random like name, but they just decided to give them like the same haircut and dress them like infant twins um <laughs> like, it's giving very freaking frack like it's really right i mean skip and zip I, like, it's I, literally yeah <laughs> like uh, it's just how are we as like an audience supposed to like care about either one of these or them collectively when you gave them like not even like main character names of a of a like saturday morning cartoon like you gave them like the offshoot like best friend like Bopsy twin names like it just it doesn't it doesn't work I'm not interested in what they're gonna do nor am I pulling for them to win ever no the most interesting thing about them is their boots they're they have the most exceptional boots I love oh the the powder blue (laughs) the powder blue boots that match the little arrow on the back of their uh trunks like I guess I'm like I Thank you, um, wardrobe department. I love that little attention to detail, but that's it. That's all I got. And again, like you said, they're very good wrestlers. Like, they're very athletic, but, like, I don't have stake in their game, you know? Right, right, exactly. Um, So this match is kind of like a little, like, preview teaser of what's going to come at SummerSlam, which is a, like, fatal four-way, like, elimination tag team match. I love a fatal um, four-way. Which, which is going to include uh, the Godwins, the new rockers, the body Donnas, and the tag team champions, uh, the smoking guns, Bart and Billy Gunn. What ends up happening in this match is we get to like a certain point. Uh, one of the body Donnas is about to like jump off of the top rope, and the tag team champions run down the aisle, throw them off of the top rope, and then proceed to just start beating everybody up, which then prompts the godwins to also come from the back and just all mayhem ensues hillbilly jim leaves his position uh at the commentator's table from spreading sunshine as he was doing to mm-hmm. get in there and beat some ass <laughs> like, he was and like the first thing he did i i said where we were watching i was like why is like hillbilly jim like winning me over like why is he suddenly and i'm like oh because he has like a, like a cute little accent and he just like sounds like he's, he's just like, like well did the best they could like 100 percent. he's just like yeah exactly like you feel like he's gonna like take you in and shelter you like i don't know like yes, and that's exactly what i was gonna say like when he first jumped up he didn't even start by fighting he started by hugging the godwin brothers that was right. the first thing he did and i was like oh it's hillbilly uh, jim <laughs> right 100 percent. Right, who knew that hillbilly jim was gonna be like the winner of this episode Re- seriously out of the blue out of left field here he comes right and then during that match we have a promo from sunny with farouk and she's got a new man. New. She she is out with the old and with the new. I'm tired of these losers. I got myself somebody who's going to win. Kick mm. your butt. Yada, yada. And then Farouk gets on the mic and is... It was weird. 
weird. It he was likens weird. himself. He's like the tiger's the king of the jungle. He doesn't need no like. He's herd like not females. the lions. Oh yeah, he's like I don't need a herd of females to like do my hunting for me. Like I'm a hunter. I've never been prey. And I was like, okay. I Meanwhile, like, your coach is a woman. That's what I'm saying. I was just like, oh. who? Right. I was like, this seems like a mental gymnastics. I don't quite understand, but sure. Yeah. But he was just going off and like, I need him to remove the helmet if I'm going to oh, take him seriously. So, thank God you said it because it's really <laughs> bothering. It's just weird. It's so, it and it kind of looks like, um, like the Star Wars, like the Stormtrooper helmets, but the ones that work in like the... The, like the ones that work like on the ship not yes, like the ones in the thank you and they have like the for some reason really long back part of the helmet that no one understands why like what are you expecting uh, i don't know what just... are you waiting for like, <laughs> what do you expect like just but weird. like i cannot take i mean like yes he is a massive man yes and like sure if i were to like come across him in person i would be intimidated to all hell but like i can't just have somebody like just shouting at me from the television like fully wearing this ridiculous helmet and i'm like yeah like it just it just isn't gonna work no um granted i do want to see him and amin johnson i do want to see that match like at SummerSlam. yeah for um, sure but it has nothing to do with him speaking no not that no i honestly there was one point where i was like I thought he was done, and I was like, okay. And then he just kept going, and I was like, right. no, 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 no. You ruined it. You ruined it. You, like, quit while you're ahead. Quit while you're ahead. Less right. is more. Sometimes less really is Sometimes more. Like you, the like... Undertaker, he said three sentences last week, and I haven't stopped thinking about it since. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Also during this match, because apparently we can't just leave a match start to finish. We not got... one match, all of them <laughs> foul. <laughs> um whatchamacallit <laughs> gorilla monsoon we we cut to gorilla monsoon in the back talking to the lawyer character um and basically he agrees to hire the mystery felon that we have been kind of following for the last couple weeks um but he assured us that not only is everyone in the company going to be watching this felon but gorilla monsoon personally is going to keep his eyes on them do we know anything else no, we do not. One, I had no idea that guy's name was Gorilla Monsoon. Don't know why I missed that, but what a name! That's oh, he insane. was he was he used to be a wrestler. He's well, a... that that has. I mean, that's the only explanation for that name, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's an insane, scary name. Um, but also, he said, "Miss," I said, "I wrote mystery felon reinstated." Oh yeah, so I guess he's been there before. That's what I I'm. Don't... I'm like. So do we know who he is, or like, is was that like a clue? I mean, I honestly, I have no idea. And you only ever see his right, the back of his right arm. And it's like a cut off denim shirt. It's all you get. Right. Which could literally be any felon. Any, <laughs> any number of the felons I know dress like that. <laughs> um, get some sleeves, boys. Like, tighten up. 100%. What is this? Are we all just supposed to be able to identify you from your elbow? Like, that's weird. <laughs> um, and then, so after that match, um, after the chaos kind of subdues, um, we have an interview, kind of like a sit-down interview with Shawn Michaels. Oh, what a treat. What a treat. <laughs> what a um, treat. Basically, this is kind of just setting up for the match at like SummerSlam. They ask him about like Vader and the kind of the challenges that that like possesses. Um, they they do ask him about like Bret Hart. And this is kind of like a different side to Shawn Michaels, where like we're so used to seeing just like the kind of in ring like performer and like the guy who's kind of just like giving like those quick like promos um but we've never actually like seen him like sit down and like have a conversation for you know five minutes or so and you get a much more like subdued Shawn Michaels you get a very like a kind of a peek into the person uh yeah less like the wrestler so I do have to make an, a very important addendum to something I said to, I think it was two episodes ago we were talking about this. Um, so this is very important information. I'm so sorry to say this, but Shawn Michaels is actually not a Leo technically. He is a cancer Leo cusp. Very important distinction to make to some people. Um, 
So yeah, my apologies to the astrology girlies everywhere. I've let you down. I hope you will learn in your hearts to forgive me. But it actually, I do want to say this in my defense because then I went down a rabbit hole looking at his chart. But if anyone can find his rising sign, please message me because I can't find it anywhere, which makes sense. Um, but if anyone knows, please DM us because uh, inquiring minds would like to know. <laughs> so we can really fully get the full picture of who the this full man picture is. because. The rising is important. And also, speaking of Shawn Michaels, we were talking about this earlier that I thought was interesting um, because we, a couple weeks ago, were talking about how he posed for Playgirl. And I was just reading an article that came out not that long ago. It was October of 2022. And Shawn Michaels was talking about how he did the photo shoot. It was like the magazine was wildly popular. And so I guess his team or whoever, or maybe it was Playgirl, I don't really remember, um, wanted to do him to do an autograph signing of the magazine um which also sting was apparently also in the magazine no one needed to see that but anyway so who knew um he was saying that at the autograph signing and i guess this was all in his autobiography as well but i guess in at the autograph signing he was like about 40 to 50 men and women showed up which is normal for me what i didn't expect and his exact words were like so many bald men wearing leather and I guess like it, he was saying that like he it was unexpected that like gay men would want would want to come and get their playgirl signed, which like to me, I guess it was obvious that like gay men bought playgirl like to me to look at men. I I also find it hilarious because he comes to the ring in essentially like leather daddy wear um, right? every every week. Uh, every we go, assless we go chaps every week, every week. um and I, I, it's kind of hilarious that like it was just so baffling to him shocking that, right that <laughs> like gay men were interested one in him based on like visuals and two because of the sheer aesthetic that he puts out <laughs> I mean, you're what, like you know. what a world to like go through like being aloof like that you know just being so unaware <laughs> <laughs> just being so it, unaware of just his raw sex appeal that like I he had just no that idea like? that it transcended gender. Yep. No gender, sexualities, species. We don't even know. <laughs> but I, we don't I know the say, depth of the love for Shawn Michaels. <laughs> don't even know. But I will say we, that's I didn't obviously yet read his autobiography. So if there's more elaboration on that Specific particular time. experience, I do not know it. But again, message us, let inform us, let us know if anyone's read it and what the full T is again oh. inquiring minds would like to know but I thought that was really interesting because that <laughs> article like I said came out a couple months ago crazy right that is fascinating but also like it doesn't it doesn't shock me too much because it was 1996 so I can't imagine that, yeah it's not like gay people were spoken about that much let alone <laughs> like <laughs> like he thought they like we're wrestling fans. Lo and behold, we've been here the whole time. We were both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what were your what were your thoughts? The the cancer side of the Leo Cancer cusp really jumped out there. Um, <laughs> it I'm was saying. the soft sweater. It was the saw. So- it was the very textured soft sweater. Um, honestly, it was like I didn't even take any notes, and we were saying this while we were watching. It's like I'm not even writing anything down because I'm just so enamored, and I get it. I say this every time I watch on Michael's. I'm like, I get it. I get why people were just like madly in love with him. There's just really something about him. But he was like, it was so funny because he was like humble, um, but he still was like not being like, oh, like I'm really nothing compared. He was still like, but I'm, you know, I know that I'm still good. Like it was just the perfect balance of like. Um, I'm that bitch, but I also know other people are excellent and like I can't wait to see where this ends up. Like, I don't know. It was just really good. It was right. really it was a really solid and like whoever He came off mar- very relatable. Like Yes, and like marketing team, the outside with the gray sweater, like mm, very well right, done. Right, right, it right. was beautiful. Like and like the whoever did the montage of the the clips like in between, so good. Just well, oh, just oh, perfectly the, executed. Like the building up the like the matches and like kind of his history. Yeah, like, well, he was like talking and he's like, oh yeah, like uh, you know, Vader's an excellent wrestler and he really got me with the power bomb and they were like showing it in like slow motion. I was like, wow, they're like really nailing this right now. Good job, team. Really good. <laughs> well if there's done. anything they do, it's a, it's like a good like montage kind of. Oh something yeah. Something the WWFE does really well. It is a montage. 
so yeah um and then the question about like bret hart and like how he won the title and how he was just like mm. listen like they're what am i supposed to say about critics like they criticize like i can't Ugh. do anything about that like i am the champion now you just kind of have to deal with it it just it, it's a, it's another facet to Shawn michaels which just makes him all the more appealing yeah um, all right so we get into the main event the battle royal the big doozy um <laughs> with... <laughs> which was wild um yeah so i just get... clarify what was going on in the beginning because i was like wait they're all gonna fight at the same time and that no one right yeah oh okay. we have previously watched royal rumbles and that's like in the same family as a battle royal but it's yeah. um you know it has the staggered entrances and there's more people in a royal rumble there's like 30 typically yeah, yeah, yeah but this one only had 11 people but that only 11 <laughs> right well yeah but like typically it can be anywhere it could be any number really as long as it's like you mean any number yeah i've seen battle royals with like 30 people like at the start or like yeah no. it's, yes and they look insane let oh, alone i can't wait to i see can't that. even i can't even like fathom having to like call that match like as a play-by-play -play, like commentator because like where do you even begin we get where we like roll through the entrances and we get to see kind of like we see mankind we see ahmed johnson and the undertaker comes out and he beelines it for mankind mm. immediately eliminating both of them they just knock each other out out of the ring and they're like i don't even need this title right now I'm going to be his ass. I need like, your ass is what I need <laughs> like, right now. Um, so they like knock themselves out and start fighting into the crowd, like into like the backstage area. They're going to handle business wherever they handle business. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of get back into the the rigmarole of the, the, the battle royal. Goldust came out sans weave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he meant business yeah 100 percent. he didn't have time for the costume today he, he was like marlena don't even lay the wig we gotta get out there <laughs> <laughs> um and then uh speaking of marlena uh <gasps> you want to comment on her little number you got a better she one than i did looked so incredible because the last few times we've seen her she's been wearing these cute little gold dresses which obviously mwah, perfect but today she was wearing like a jumpsuit or like a pants suit but like an extremely puffy like almost windbreaker-esque gold jacket with like a belt she just looked so incredible i like and she just literally like she played no must no fuss just standing there on the side in her like incredible outfit just again tooting on the cigar minding her business and but i just was like oh the fit it just Mwah. well done beautiful exceptional oh, fantastic so we're, we're like going through the the match people are getting eliminated um as the like field starts to like thin down a little bit the undertaker and mankind come back from fighting like backstage like they come back like through the crowd um just to cause more chaos they re-enter the ring um <laughs> just to because everyone else is irrelevant information in mm -hmm. the world that they're living in. Mm -hmm. um, and then continue to fight again back, like, into the backstage area. Mm -hmm. uh, where we then see them, like, or we see The Undertaker mostly just throwing anything that isn't nailed down at <laughs> mankind's face. <laughs> and, just, and throwing him every which way around the kind of arena. Mm -hmm. which is all you know setting up the greater purpose of like the boiler room brawl and kind of what we're supposed to expect from. Mm. so um we kind of boil down to the final two it uh is gold dust and ahmed johnson but before i get into that psycho sid gets eliminated because cornet's little groupies come back out um after the British Bulldog and Owen Hart were like eliminated. So they like come out and like just like talk their ish. And like um Psycho Sid is out here like, you know, being 8,000 feet tall and like <laughs> yelling at them from like from the ring. And Stone Cold Steve Austin just comes by and is like, you know what? Boop, boop. <laughs> don't need you <laughs> just, you know, you're spending way too much time doing that. Goodbye. Yep. Um so and then we see Psycho Sid proceed to chase um cordette's camp like into the back mm -hmm. which 
is going to be great because Psycho Sid is facing the British Bulldog at SummerSlam. Um, mm. So it adds, it gives it a little more spice. A little more flavor. So then we get back in the ring. It's the final two. It's Goldust and Ahmed Johnson. They're having like a back and forth. And normally it's Goldust who is having his little scantily clad moments. Um, but Ahmed Johnson's like whole cheek was out. The full cheek. For the full match. The like, whole match. <laughs> Which was... Again, impressive. How do you I was not, not know? No, I mean, no. But we have a little moment where Ahmed Johnson like is about to toss Goldust out, and Goldust's foot like knocks Ahmed like also out of the ring, but he like holds onto the top rope for like dear life, mm-hmm. thus <laughs> having him win the match. Um, so so basically, this ensures that whoever wins the Shawn Michaels Vader match at SummerSlam. Uh, they will be facing Ahmed Johnson the following night on Raw for the WWF Championship, mm. whoever that may be. Mm. Uh, um, Vince McMahon crawls his little booty into the ring, tries to get like a little interview about like how Ahmed feels about the situation, whether he's you know wants to face Sean or Vader, blah blah blah. And Farouk shows up, and what is kind of a very weirdly like timid beginning to like a fight like yeah it it feels like they were waiting for the teachers to show up before they started swinging you know what i mean yeah like just i want you all to see that he hit me first like someone's got to bear witness to this right and so it was just a weird kind of like not aggressive like start to the fight so then once Mm -hmm. they actually like did start fighting i was just like I I was so distracted by the fight the fact that it started awkwardly. Yeah, it was like weird. I was like, what is kind of happening right now? Yeah, it just felt very like jerky. And then the episode basically ends there. Um, yeah, with the two of them kind of getting pulled, um, like off of each other. But honestly, like I'd be upset too if I was Ahmed Johnson. Like, yeah, bruised my kidney or like ruptured it whatever happened. whatever it doesn't matter i'd be pissed Livid. So, um i don't blame him for it being on site so no swear on site and also if Bruce want to keep showing up like i didn't even ask you like what are you what are you doing here well we can't help him so i can't know help him so. you just like um pay attention to me oh god seriously he and sonny are like made for each other oh my god oh honestly <laughs> <laughs> honestly oh we did have a uh wooden fly today uh moment of a what uh what wouldn't fly today like what wouldn't be like allowed oh to oh oh oh, oh uh, yeah that was really really bad really jarring during the um the battle royal they cut to like a, a sign in the crowd that just says gay dust on it it's just a weird thing because it's just like a oh i didn't know it was a thing well, no, well, people had been like from the aunts like set of Goldust were just like didn't like his character because they thought assumed that he was gay. E. Right. And like to be fair, he's a little <laughs> gropey with the other wrestlers. So it's not like it's like completely unwarranted. That was kind of like an already planted thing in a lot of like fans minds like they didn't like so yeah. like they weren't like all about it but i'm i'm impressed that they got the sign like through you know what yeah i, mean? I like, mean i was like ah and it was like up for a minute like this kid had up for a minute yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's just one of those things that just wouldn't happen today uh, no they wouldn't yeah they wouldn't even get through the door no not at all but it really goes to show like there are so many elements in wrestling that like also like appeal to like gay culture and like it's in the same vein as like drag shows it's a performance it's a like you know what i mean um but like and the costuming the lights the like pyrotechnics yeah like the theme songs like like there's just so many things that like that venn diagram like does they're overlapping yes they overlap a lot more than people typically like to believe Right. Um, which it does make a lot of sense as to why like a lot of like gay fans would enjoy wrestling um, right. because there's like, you know, there's like the notion. It's just like, oh, you know, like dudes in tights fighting. Great. Don't get me wrong. As a gay man, win. But... <laughs> win for me. <laughs> like, no complaints here. 
However, I didn't watch wrestling for 20 years, starting at the age of like two, like because of that. You know what right. I mean? It's it's the like the larger than life characters. Like it's the yes. same reason like gay icons are gay icons. Like like there's a reason why we're all obsessed with like Moira from Schitt's Creek and like Cruella Deville. You know, like yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the showmanship. It's the extra. Um, it's the flavor. And, it's the branding. It's the character. It's everything. That's what I'm saying. So it, mm-hmm. it's like one of those one of those things where it's just like. It makes sense if you think about it for like for like seconds. more than two seconds. Yeah, right. it's like <laughs> one in the one very obviously equals two. Right, 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 right. That's it for this week's episode, guys. Next week, uh, we are going to watch another episode of Raw. It's what we do here. But it is going to feature Shawn Michaels in a non-title match versus Owen Hart, which the two of them are just A1 in the ring, which Ooh, is... I want to see it. Yeah. Um, we've already seen them have like kind of one outing, but they're just so good in the ring. I could watch them fight forever. Um, but thank you for joining us and we will see you guys next week. We'll see you next week. Have a good week, everybody.